Um, it isn't necessary that MV be independent of the depth. I just chose this because this particular tree is a rather natural example of a tree that isn't, isn't of fixed growth, but in this case is of factorial growth. So in Sagan's algorithm, or ours, we have 6 times 1 to the 5th factor here, because there were 6 choices for the root. And then all the other labels had to go down into the one subtree. Here we have 3 times 3 squared. When we got to this tree and we're told it had 3 labels, we had 3 choices for which label went to the root. And then the other two, 2 children could have gone to any of the 3 slots. And we chose the left and right and left the middle one empty. <coughs> and now I'll present Sagan's algorithm. Uh, both in order to show how our algorithms relate, and because we'll use both Sagan's algorithm and our algorithm to prove Han's second formula, which is on complete, uh, on complete binary trees, that, and I'll give the definition when, uh, when that comes up. So Sagan's algorithm, again, is distinguished from ours by generating a random increasingly labeled tree. For his direct proof of Yang's, res uh, Yang's result, his probability weights were different, but the generalization includes the m version of Yang's formula as a special case. Start with an empty tree and assign probability 1 to adding a root. Choose a vertex slot according to the current probability distribution and put a vertex there with the lowest remaining label. And then replace the assigned probability for that vertex, dividing it equally among all the potential slots for children. And repeat that until all the labels have been used. So the probability we get for an individual vertex in Sagan's algorithm is the product of the number of slots for, of children for its ancestors. That is one reciprocal of that product. That is, it's the probability a random path starting from the root will pass through the vertex. If you go back here, the probability of adding this vertex to the tree was 1 6, because this vertex had probability 1 half, because this vertex had probability 1. And there were three slots for children here. In particular, this formula is nice if, if mw is a constant, as in Yang's formula, then the probability assigned to a potential vertex at the depth d sub v is 1 over m to the d sub v. And in our previous example, uh, where m sub w was d sub w plus 1, that gave the probability was 1 over d sub v factorial. So looking here, you notice that there are six vertices, there are six potential vertices, or six vertices in the infinite tree at this level, and each will have probability one sixth of being added, what if it is possible to add that vertex at all. And the proof for Sagan's algorithm is almost as, as natural. So the probability we add a particular vertex is one over mw, where mw is the product of the number of children's slots for its ancestors. And when we add that vertex, we're adding 1 to the hook lengths of all of its ancestors. So that means that the product of 1 over mw to the hook lengths is increased by a factor of 1 over mw for each ancestor. So the probability we choose a particular increasingly labeled tree is the product of the probabilities of adding each of the individual vertices, and which is the product of 1 over mw so, uh, take, it, take it over all vertices and then over all w, which are ancestors of those vertices. Now switch the order of products, and we have the product over all w in the t, the product over all their descendants of 1 over mw. And the number of descendants of a vertex is exactly 1 less than the hook length. So we get 1 over mw to the hw minus 1. Now sum that over all the n factorial over uh, the product of the hook lengths, increasing labelings of all the trees, and that proves Han's formula, or Yang's formula, which we still have there, or Sagan's formula, all of which have essentially the same form. So what I said about the dif difference between our formula and, Yang and Sagan's formula, besides the difference in the proof, is we, give it, we found an arbitrarily labeled tree, and, they, and Sagan's result found an increasingly labeled tree. But we can modify our algorithm to find an arbitrary label tree, because the first step of our algorithm was to assign a random label to the root. And instead, we could always assign the lowest outstanding label in a subtree to the root, rather than using a random label. Now we lose the 1 over hv factorial, 
So the probability of choosing a particular increasingly labeled t is, this, is the product of 1 over mv to the hv minus 1. And we just showed that's the same distribution from Sagan's algorithm. And we don't even need to know about Sagan's algorithm to say, well, you multiply this by the number of increasingly labeled trees to get the, pro to get the, uh, prob to get the probability and get Yang's formula. So here's an example of how our algorithm would work in the modified form. Again, I'll construct a binary tree on six vertices. Now the one had to go to the root. And we had two to the fifth choices as to where to partition the other five vertices. Now we have the three in this tree had to go to the root. And we had two squared choices as to where to put the other two. And here, the two had to go to the root. And we had two choices as to where to put the four. So the product is 2 to the 5th times 2 squared times 2. 2 to the 6 minus 1 times 2 to the 3 minus 1 times 2 to the 2 minus 1. The product of 1 over, in this case, 2 to the hv minus 1. So that, um, so that is the first formula. Now I'll state and prove Han's second formula. A bi we define a binary tree to be complete if every non-leaf node of the tree has two children. And there's a canonical procedure for completing a binary tree. Assign children to all the empty sl slots. If you have a tree with n vertices, there are n plus 1 empty slots. Uh, the reason that this, uh, that this procedure is, just, is done with this black tree, for example, we didn't need to assign children to this vertex. We could have left it complete. But by having a canonical procedure, by assigning children to all the empty slots, we get an invertible procedure. To complete a tree, you assign children to all the empty slots. Uh, to uh, to uh, convert the completion of the tree back to the original tree, you chop off all the leaves. Note by, that from this algorithm, completing a tree changes the hook length from h sub v to 2h sub v plus 1 because a tree with n vertices has n plus 1 slots to put children in. <clears throat> so here's Han's second formula. And again, and again, I will leave this on the board, because we'll refer to it frequently. Sum over binary trees t, product over all vertices of the tree. 1 over 2hv minus 1, 2 to the 2xhv minus 1 is equal to 1 over 2n plus 1, 1 be factorial. So notice how very similar this looks to Han's first formula. Is the plus here? Where's the 2 Maybe the plus. Plus, yes. That's a plus. This is a minus. Yeah. Thanks. Notice how very similar this looks to Han's first formula. If, um, if we did Han's first formula to use the completed tree, then this would be the same except that instead of 2, H, 2 to the 2hv minus 1, we expect the 2 to the 2hv here. But still, this has the same formula. And uh, Sagan was the one who showed that this formula could be stated in terms of completed trees. And that suggested that there should be a probabilistic proof. In his original paper, he didn't have a proof. And when he gave the seminar here last year, he credited us with developing the algorithm that did prove it. We will sh and we will prove it using our algorithm and using his. So here's our first R algorithm. This is almost the same as, our, as the algorithm, except that we're going to keep the tree complete. So construct a random labeled complete binary tree with labels in a set of odd size. A binary tree, a, a binary tree is complete if every subtree has an odd number of vertices. And so assign a random label to the root. And if there's more than one label in the set, so that we have something left to do, partition the remaining labels randomly into two subsets, S1 and S2, of odd size. If we've constructed S1 and S2, they can't be empty because they're of odd size. So that means we can assign two children to the root, v1 and v2. And if, uh, if the sets have more than one element, apply the algorithm recursively to construct subtrees rooted at those vertices. 
with the vertices labeled for, by the SI. So that explains where the missing factor came from. Hence, second formula has the 2 to the 2 HV minus 1 for every vertex. Now, we're, we have, if, if we have a tree T, then its completion T hat has hook length 2 HV plus 1. But we don't have 2 to the 2 HV choices because only half the partitions of a set of size 2 HV are both into odd parts. So here's an example, and unlike my previous examples, this tree, since 6 is an even number, this tree will have to have 7 vertices. Mm -hmm. uh, does this procedure also work for ternary trees or uh, trees? It works, but you get a, but the formula is not nice. Uh, be, um, because I'll, I've got, a, I'll, I've got a, a slide with that in a minute, actually. <laughs> that, that you can do it. But, so here I chose randomly the label 1 for the root. And of, out of seven choices, and then I have two to the fifth choices for a partition of a set of size six into two odd parts. Now the two, three, four, five, seven needs to be dealt with. I picked seven for its root, I have one of five choices, and I had two cube choices of how to partition the remaining vertices. And now I still have this, the three is fixed because it's just one vertex, and <coughs> one value, and here I have three values, and I chose the four, for the root, that was one of three choices, and then the five two had to both be children of the four, but they could have gone on either side. So this is where the factors come from. And the proof, again, uh, comes right out from that argument. If t hat is the completion of a tree t, then we had two hv plus one choices for the label at vertex v, where hv is the hook length in the tree t. And we had two to the two hv minus one ways to assign the remaining lengths, uh, because uh, we had to keep both sets odd. So the probability of getting a particular t hat and a particular labeling is the product, it, this is really a product of all the vertices in t hat, but the vertices in t are exactly those vertices in t hat that aren't leaves, and for the leaves there was only one choice. So we have 1 over 2 hv plus 1, 2 to the 2 hv minus 1. And now sum that over all 2n plus 1 factorial labelings of all complete trees to get 2n plus 1 factorial sum over t, product over all vertices, 1 over 2 hv plus 1, 2 to the 2 hv minus 1, which is 1. And that's Hans' formula multiplied by 2n plus 1 quantity factorial. So we had this question a minute ago, what happens if you try this algorithm for m area trees? Well, you can do the algorithm. The problem is that you get a term that isn't very nice. If you partition a set of size 2k into two equal part, into two parts, the probability that, the rent, that both parts are odd is a half. If you partition a set of size mk into m parts, for the tree to stay complete, you have to have all parts congruent to 1 mod m. And that is not, uh, that not only is something that depends on the size of the set, but it's something that doesn't even have a nice formula. Uh, so, you, so you'll get a formula like Hand's formula, but with an extra term, which is just the, prob which is the probability of partitioning a set of size mk into m parts, each congruent to 1 mod m. And I haven't even bothered to write the formula here because of that. Uh, what happens for size 2, not only is the factor a constant 2, but that 2 disappears into the 2, into the two to the 2 hv. And it just turns it into 2 to the 2 hv minus 1, so the formula is, is particularly elegant. Now, uh, for Sagan's algorithm, for the same problem. And we'll use Sagan's algorithm unchanged to generate a, an increasingly labeled tree on 2n plus 1 vertices, and then, find, and then see whether it turns out to be a complete tree. So this is really suggested by the relationship between Hans' formula, uh, between Hans' two formulas. So, so this is Sagan's algorithm, and this is actually an unchanged algorithm except that here the tree is binary. So start with an empty tree and assign a probability 1 of adding a root. Assign a label to the current distribution. According to the current distribution, assign, assign the lowest label and put a vertex there. Now once we've placed a vertex, that had probability 1 over 2 to the dv, uh, 2 to the dv hat, uh, for putting the label v, vertex v hat at depth dv hat, and split that equally among the two children each with a probability 1 over 2 to the dv hat plus 1 for the two slots. 
Repeat this until we run out of labels. So this will generate a tree. And now the question is, is the tree complete? A binary tree is complete if and only if every one of the hooks has odd sides. That is, if every non-leaf vertex has left and right subtrees both of odd sides. And in Sagan's algorithm, because we are, we are assigning the leaf to randomly to each subtree, the probably the left sub the probably the last ed vertex added made the left subtree odd was a half. So and this has to happen n times for each of the n internal vertices. So the probability Sagan's algorithm gives a complete binary tree on n vertices is exactly one over two to the n. And if it does, then our t hat is the completion of another tree, and we need only check the algebra. If a vertex had hook length h, v, and t, then it has hook length 2hv plus 1 in t hat. So the probability we get a particular labeling of the completion of the tree t is the product over all the vertices of 1 over 2 to the 2hv. Now sum that over all increasing labelings of all, of all t hat, and we get 2n plus 1 factorial sum over all tree. Uh, overall complete binary t, overall binary t, the product of 1 over 2hv plus 1, 2 to the 2hv still, equals 1 over 2 to the n. And that 1 over 2 to the n uh, cancels out, uh, uh, provides the minus 1 factor that we needed. So that, so that in fact, Sagan's algorithm, if you don't change the algorithm at all and just find out did you get a complete binary tree, proves hand second formula probabilistically. So, so here, then here are the main references for the results. Uh, Han's paper was the first. It was published a few months ago in Combinatorica. Uh, Sagan's paper appeared in Seminar of the de Combinatoire. And uh, Yang's paper, is, I, has, I have not yet seen published. It's on the archive, though. And uh, this is a reference for it on the archive. And I haven't had a chance to edit the paper yet. To, uh, to uh, add uh, Chen Gao and Duo's paper, which was just uh, which just appeared on the archive last week, and, and most important, your paper. And my paper does not yet it, my paper does not yet exist in an online form, uh, although these slides uh, I've um, given permission to post on the seminar page, and I do have a few draft copies of the paper, or I can email one if you'd like it. Okay, uh, do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for a beautiful talk. It's time for questions. Uh, is that factor uh, uh, periodic modulo uh, m? If you have m or each, is that factor of periodic uh, period m? Um, is, is what factor? You said that there's a factor which tells you what's the probability. Oh, yeah, oh the, the problem. Uh, the probability. Get one, a remainder no, one. The, uh, so, so what I'm looking at is if you take a partition of a set of size mk into uh, into m parts, what's the probability that all m parts are congruent to one modulo m? Uh, that's that factor is not pure, that factor is not periodic. As k gets large, it uh, would converge to uh, it would converge to uh, one over m to the k minus one. But it's only if m equals two, the factor is always uh, not one over, one over m to the m minus one. Uh, but uh, it, uh, I, there is, I don't think there's a nice formula for that number. Uh, well, for two, the probability is always a half, which is, which is more natural. So you, you can work out the formula. I believe the paper actually has the formula with just a term that said, and this pro the extra factor is this probability, and I'm, not, and I'm not getting a form for this probability. Because it doesn't have a nice one, but it's certainly a sequence that exists. Okay. Yes? Since it's a probabilistic proof, is it possible to compute like moments of some random variables, have some natural random variables, and then have moments, expectation, but also higher moments uh, from these formulas? Uh, um, to get moments, you have to, uh, you'd have to have some uh, uh, real or integer valued random variable. I don't yeah, have, so some I, don't ha I, don't, uh, I don't know how to define the moment of a, uh, uh, of a, a tree-valued random variable. We have I don't even know how to define the mean of a tree-valued random variable. 
you get a distribution on trees. I, you, yeah. you, no, you might, you, no, you could, you, I haven't looked at this at all, but you could ask them something like, what's the, uh, what is the uh, uh, mean depth of the tree? Yeah. Um, if you choose a, um, and it, uh, if you choose a tree randomly according, either an, or, or of a random binary tree or of a random binary tree which, with, with increasing labels or of a random binary tree with any labeling. It, um, those are three different probability distributions. And is there any hope to have something like this for non trees, for partially ordered sets? Some non trees, of course. Uh, um, uh, uh, I don't think it works very well. Uh, Not in general, but for. It, um, yeah, I, I don't know what the class of sets on which you can define a hook length are. Yeah. Uh, because. Yeah, uh, let, me go, uh, let me go back here. So here you have the formula for one specific class of partially ordered sets, yeah. uh, Young Tableau. And, um, and actually, because an increasing labeling of a tree is exactly analogous to a standard Young tableau. That's an, that's an increasing la uh, labeling of a particular post set. But the formula only for, for tab Young tableau only works for standard and I believe for shifted Young tableau, and not for, it doesn't work even for general skew Young tableau. Uh, so, um, and so we need some definition of a hook, and the hook length definition for a young tableau and for a tree are incompatible. By the tree definition, this, uh, this cell would have hook length 5 because that's 5 descendants. But in the young tableau formula, it has only 4. Other questions? Well, let's thank David again. Thank you. Okay, thanks.